be a bunch of comic shops in Beeville back in the day as a kid. Uh, not a lot to do. Really, you know, you can just go to the bowling alley or go to school. So I went to the comic shops a lot. I was already watching popular shows like He-Man, Transformers, uh, Thundercats, things of the sort, you know, so it was an easy transition to, to comic books. And with three shops that we had at the time, you know, it just made sense. I just started reading them, started collecting, and I still haven't stopped. I think in like the second grade I said, um, when they give you like that job evaluation thing, like what you want to do with your life, I was like, I want to be a comic book artist. And uh, now I am. <laughs> Superhero stuff, and then uh, I, I noticed, you know, at the same time there was Mad Magazine and Crap Magazine, a lot of satirical humor stuff, really caught my interest. I used to have a subscription, buy them by the bulk. And uh, you know, just kind of went from there. I found out about Sergio Agronis's Gru. Um, you know, a lot of the, the not so adult themed underground comic books. I think Last Gasp is the only original underground comics book with an X, and it's still publishing. And they maybe put out three comics a year, if that. About five weeks ago, there's a Spring Flame Carnival on the university campus here. Somebody had seen uh, my flyers, you know, asking for help to save the Nono universe and help you plan a Nono published. Um, confided in me and told me that they were, you know, an underground comic artist as well, and that they knew of a really low price publishing company that could help me out. I checked them out, and sure enough, the prices were like more than reasonable. Um, I didn't have a very hard time finding. The finances to back of a limited run. It's just kind of gone from there. <laughs> Through the years, I've been in over 20 something bands. I've recorded too many releases to even begin to name. Uh, with FTM, I've done two full lengths, nine EPs. Um, FTM Records annually, semi annually, releases a compilation of unsigned artists from the Texas area, mainly South Texas, but I mean we've had artists from New York to Amsterdam to Sweden, you know, on these comps and people from uh, Georgia and whatnot. Um, you know, I put those out. They're usually free of charge or two dollars at most just to cover, you know, minimal production fee. I try to help out anyone and everyone that I can that I see with any talent who's struggling to do s the same, you know, just to get their voice heard and to express themselves because it seems these days that it's too easy to just get in your box, go to work, um, be quiet, smile and nod, and just live in a doldrum life, you know, and you need to express yourself, you know. I would just like to have my work published, you know, I'd like to have it seen and known. I would like to um, eventually have it known outside of Texas maybe influence some other people. I think that's the biggest thing that I'd like to do, is influence younger generations and other people to create their own works and uh, aspire to just follow their heart, you know? I know it sounds cheesy as all, but, you know, hey, uh, you get a great deal of satisfaction from it, you know? There's a lot of struggle and stuff that comes along with it, but uh, just that feeling of accomplishment that comes with, like, chasing your dreams and following your goals and then actually realizing it and physically, like, seeing it manifest, you know, like, the second these issues of Planet Nono come in, that's a childhood dream come true. That is something, you know, like I said, from the second grade, I was like, I want to be a comic book artist. When I hold that comic, it's another check on the list. Now, whether it gets seen in California, New York, England, or whatever, if it just stays in South Texas, it only does one run, that doesn't really matter to me at this point, because I've already achieved a childhood dream. Now, I would like it to progress from there, you know, I'm not going to stop. Issue two is in the works. It's a glimpse, the cover. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want you to look at it too well. But, uh, you know, I'm not stopping. There's going to be plenty more to come. And I'm just going to kind of go go along with the ride and see where it takes me, you know. 
Life's about the unexpected journey, and uh, I'm just here to experience it, for better or worse. Hi, my name's Will. This is a comic book I did. Uh, tell, tell the story. All right, yeah, so uh, when I first came to Kingsville back in 2007, uh, I was here for the first free, free comic book day, and uh, yeah, there's a comic book called Love and Capes. I had a Create a Hero contest. I had a little too much to drink one night and created a ripoff of the Green Lantern called the Yellow Flashlight with uh, Double D batteries. His tagline was Double D Justice for All. Next morning I woke up, I found it on the floor, footprints and everything is not in the best of condition. I put it in an envelope and mailed it. Lo and behold, a few months later, I won. And I told myself that if I could win this contest with this horrible character, I could do anything.